maybe. So when you're finding the converse, what is it that you're actually doing? Uh, you're switching. What do you mean you're switching? You're switching your state. You're switching the if and the then part of the statement, but leaving if and then in place, correct? So you're switching the hypothesis and the conclusion of the statement. Um, and so sometimes you have to adjust things uh, grammatically to make sense. So um, like the subject of the sentence, when you switch, you know, if the diagonals, the diagonals were the subject, um, then, well, let's look at this. So the then part of the statement would be the parallelogram is a rhombus. So if a parallelogram, oops, apparently I can't spell parallelogram. Then what? You could say then the diagonals of the parallelogram are perpendicular. You can switch out uh, the parallelogram with a pronoun if you want to. That's fine because you've already mentioned it in the first part of the sentence. Um, but if you want to be safe, better be safe than sorry. You could say then the diagonals, because be careful with your use of pronouns then the diagonals of the parallelogram um, are perpendicular. So for the second one, if a point is on the perpendicular <coughs> bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So on this one, you have to be careful. If it is equal distance from the endpoints of the segment, you can't use that word it. What does it represent? A point. So if a point is equidistant from the endpoints, of a segment, then the point or it, but I would say, I would be safer, then the point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So that's review. Your vocabulary word for the day is verify. The joy of verifying means we're, we're to verify something, we're considering the truth or the accuracy of that. And um, that's how we determine <coughs> proofs or ways that we determine the accuracy of a conjecture or a statement. So. Um, True or false? You can verify that two triangles are similar by showing that corresponding angles are proportional. True or false? You can verify that two triangles are similar. So what's the definition of similar figures? What kind of angles are congruent? Corresponding angles are congruent and what else? Corresponding sides are proportional. So don't forget to use that word corresponding because it's not just any sides that are proportional, it's just not any angles that are equal. So they have to be corresponding. And is that what this says here? It says that two triangles are similar by showing that corresponding angles are proportional. What's wrong with that? Are corresponding angles proportional in similar figures? What should they be? It should be congruent. Now, if it did say congruent, would that be enough? Just to show that the angles are um, all equal? 
Well, you don't know that answer yet. But let's suffice it to say that this one's false, the way it's written. Look at the second statement. You can use uh, properties, postulates, and previously proven theorems to verify steps in a proof. In other words, verify means to use them as um, reasons for, st for your steps in a proof. Is that what we use for reasons and steps in a proof? Are properties, postulates, and previously proven theorems? Yeah, so that's true. All right, so go to page two. Well, we missed some of that, but anyway. You guys have to tell me that. I keep missing my technology. All right, so we're, we're going to look at, I was trying to figure out what y'all were looking at. Now I know. We're going to use uh, one of these three uh, postulates or theorems here in this problem. So I want you to look at it, and I want you to talk with those around you and decide, is it AA? Do you have the ability to determine our two corresponding angles congruent? Is it SAS? Do you have two sides in an angle? And are, is that angle the included angle? And then are the two sides proportional to each other? Or the two sets of corresponding sides are proportional? Or do you have all three sides that are proportional to each other? So I'll give you a few minutes to decide. Or really more like a minute. That's all you need. <laughs> well, look at each triangle separately. So you got a two and a three on one triangle and a right angle on the other one, or on that one, right? So is that is that side side angle or is that side angle side? Is the angle included? Okay. So it's SAS on that one. Look at the second triangle. Is the second triangle SAS also? Okay. Then you have to decide are those sides proportional to each other? Do you have to set up ratios? Of corresponding sides. You have to set up ratio of the corresponding sides. Find the scale factor. You could do two over three, but I prefer that you do it from one triangle to the other triangle. Yeah. No. All right, so let's stop for a minute. What do you think it is? You have to prove it. Shh. You have to prove it. So if it's SAS, um, that means that the angle, the angle here is included and here is included in between the two sides. Are these the two sides that make up that angle? And those are the two sides that make up that angle, right? So it is SAS, but that's not enough. In order for me to accept that you understand it's SAS, you have to prove that both pairs of corresponding sides are proportional. So what I want to see is that you're taking um, and you have to make a choice. Do you want to go small to large or large to small triangle? It doesn't matter. I'm going to go left to right, which means I'm going to go small triangle over large triangle. And I have to see this work as justification for the reasoning for um, your conclusion. And so then I'm going to take, and I'm going to set up a proportion of um, small triangle to large triangle. So what is my small side on, on this triangle? Two. So I'm going to put 2 here, whoops, that didn't work out so swell. I'm going to put 2 here, and what is the side on the large triangle that corresponds to 2? 4. And then I'm going to put 3 here, because that's the other side on the small triangle that I'm looking for, and then the 6 on the big triangle must correspond to that. Now you could have written 4 over 2 equals 6 over 3. And then you could do one of two things. You could either show the cross products, which would be 2 times 3 is 12 equals 4 times 3 is 12. So you could show the cross products as being equal. <coughs> that shows that you have a true proportion. Or you could just reduce um, this proportion here and show that this scale factor equals that scale factor. So what does this reduce to? 1 half. What does this reduce to? 1 half. So you could just show that 1 half equals 1 half, and that is also a check. So either one of those two would be acceptable. But you can't just leave it as 2 fourths equals 3 6. That hasn't proven anything to me. So either show the cross products are equal or that they reduce to the same scale factor. Okay? So then let's look at problem. Oh, so then here we want to write SAS similarity. And technically, that's a theorem. I'm not going to make you know whether it's a theorem or a postulate. You just can write SAS similarity, and that little squiggle, that tilde, means similarity. 
because you have to you have to tell me that you're using something different than the SAS congruent postulate, right? Because it's not the same as what we use with congruent triangles. All right, so let's look at problem one. Are the two triangles similar, and how do you know? First of all, are the triangles oriented correctly? No, visually definitely not. Um, can I find the missing angle in each of those triangles? Sure. So what is the missing angle in the little triangle? How do you find it? <laughs> well, these two angles here should add up to 90 because this one here is already 90, correct? So what's 90 minus 39? It 51, right? Should be 51. <laughs> so this is 51. And then what do you think uh, 50, look at the other triangle. What do you think 90 minus 51 is? 39. So they do have the same angles inside, don't they? If I were you, I would cross out one of the triangles and redraw it so that it is oriented exactly the same as the other triangle. So that's what I'm going to do. And if the 39 degrees is here on this triangle, then the 39 degrees is going to be here on this triangle. So here goes my 39, and then this must be 51. And the reason why I do that is so I could look at corresponding sides, if I needed to. On this one, do I need to? Are the two triangles similar, and how do you know? Angle, angle. Right, angle, angle similarity. And so, they, yes, they are similar, and actually we've proven three angles, right? So your answer would be um, yes, because three corresponding angles are congruent. So AA similarity applies. Whoops. Oh, the buzzing noise when I, oh, that's my, that's my lightsaber. Oh. <laughs> Is that what you guys were wondering? Yeah. Sometimes, well, because I turned the volume up on this, you probably didn't hear it yesterday. <laughs> All right, last problem we're going to do today. Problem two, we're going to verify triangle similarity again. So are the triangles similar? If so, all you're going to do today is apply these theorems and postulates. Um, if so, write a similarity statement for the triangles. That's the triangle similarity statement. Triangle blah, blah, blah is similar to triangle blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> um, and explain how you know the triangles are similar. So uh, look at the two triangles. Are they oriented correctly? Yes or no? Yeah. No, because, I mean, I can definitely see my lightsaber. I can definitely see that this uh, point of the triangle is down and we have a point of the triangle up here. So in order to orient the triangles correctly, if I were you, I would again erase out one of the triangles, redraw it down below because we're, it's, it's especially important with this particular example because I have to deal with the side lengths rather than the angles this time. And to figure out <laughs> what side lengths belong where, look at the triangle that we're trying to redraw. What is the smallest side on this triangle? The six, and actually I have two sides that are six, so it's an isosceles triangle, right? And over here, those smaller sides are eight on this one, so my two small sides should belong here and here. And so that's where I'm going to put the six and the six, and then that leaves me with, what, a nine down here? And instead of setting up, your book likes to set up the three uh, different proportions separately, I propose that you do the following. So take each of your corresponding sides and set up a ratio, like a scale factor ratio. And you need to decide, do you want to go small to large or large to small? Small triangle to large triangle or large triangle to small? What do you want to do? Okay, so let's go small to large. So we're going to ignore the three boxes here. And so I'm going to set up three different proportions and then see if they're equal to each other. <clears throat> so my different uh, 
sides would be a six on the small triangle corresponds to what on the big? Eight. And so six again corresponds to eight. Those are the other two sides. And then that leaves me with nine corresponding to 12. Now, so far they don't <clears throat> look the same, <coughs> but let's reduce them. What is six eighths reduced to? Yeah, two goes into both of them, so three fourths. So I end up with, we're going to write it down here. I end up with three fourths equals three fourths, so far so good, equals, what is nine twelfths reduced to? Three goes into both of those, so it also reduces to three fourths. I have to see this before you can conclude what? Are the triangles similar? Yes. Yes, by what? All right, so they are similar by SSS similarity theorem. Notice that it has a little tilde behind it. And then uh, because they're similar, we can complete a similarity statement. So I forgot to put my letters on my triangle above, so let's go ahead and fill in my letters. Um, look here. The sides that are 6, um, this is C right here, so I know that C has to be the vertex angle here. So I'm going to replace C with here. And then one side is AC and the other side is BC. And so does it matter whether I put A here or C here? It really won't matter, will it? Because I've got two sides that correspond. So technically you could actually have two statements here. So I'm just going to put A here and B here. So put A here and B here. So let's write our similarity statement. What, um, what corresponds to A on the other triangle? So A is in the same position as E. So we've got E and then B corresponds to what? F and that leaves us with G and that's all you have to do. Simple, right? All right, so we are going to be uh, proving triangles similar again, and we're also going to have some proof. So problem three is a proof. I would like to see if you could try to figure that out on your own, so let's just talk about a few things. First of all, look at what they gave you. They gave you that line AC is parallel to line MP, so these two lines here are parallel. Note that these would be transversals, right? And then they've, um, your job is to prove that the two triangles are congruent by either AA, SAS, SSS, right? One of those. So they have given you this box of reason choices. So I want you to take those box of reason choices and go through here. And I want you to determine what reasons go where. So you really only have two to determine. So I want you to take a few minutes on, or well, a couple of seconds on your own to figure it out and then I'm going to put you into some small groups. So think about it on your own first. with two to three people and I want you to confer on uh, what you think about the steps in this proof. So, confer.
Let's stop. So what is always or should be always our first reason? Shh, given. And is this what's given? Yes. So So our first reason is given. And then from there we went from the fact that we have parallel lines to angle A being congruent to angle P. So let's look at the picture. An angle A is congruent to angle P. Why? What kind of angles are they? They're not vertical. Oh, oh. A and P. The, they are on the, this transversal, and these are the parallel lines. So they are not opposite interior. Alternate. Alternate interior angles on parallel lines. So anytime you have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. Could we have chosen a different set? Isn't angle C and angle M, aren't they also alternate interior angles? So we could have chosen those. And then, right. And then by that, we could have proven um, the triangle congruent by AA. So you could have done that as your proof. But that's not what they gave you a choice of, right? Um, and then what do you know about these two angles here? They're vertical angles. And those are the angles that are being named here. And so... Um, vertical angles are congruent. And so that's what that one is saying. And then finally, um, how do we prove the triangle is congruent? Well, let me put my arc marks here. So as you look at this, because I have two only two angles, this is um, an angle here and this is an angle here so by AA can't we prove the triangle is congruent so this is the AA similarity postulate so how hard was that proof not too hard um, most of these proofs are going to be using all, well all the proofs are using prior knowledge they're just as easy as the triangle congruence proofs that we had previously well, you have, you have a plan of attack, right? Once you figure out how you're going to prove the triangle similar, whether it's AA, SAS, or um, which one did I miss? SSS, right? Um, once you figure out how you're going to prove them congruent, that tells you the progression of the proof right there. That's the order that the steps should go in. And so it makes it easier for you. All right, let's look at example four. says, why is it important that the ground be flat to use the method of indirect measurement illustrated in the problem below? And so the problem says, before rock climbing, Darius, here's our friend Darius, wants to know how high he will have to climb. So he wants to know this height here. He places a mirror on the ground and walks backward until he can see this top of the cliff in that mirror. Fascinating, right? So it creates a triangle from his vision, from his line of sight to the mirror, creates this triangle. And then the mirror is reflecting the image from here into that mirror to his eyes. And it creates another triangle here. Both are right triangles because we assume that he is perpendicular to the ground. And we're going to make the assumption not all cliffs are perpendicular to the ground, but this is the assumption we're making here. And this is a fairly vertical climb, isn't it? I mean, there's a little bit of difference here, but that's negligible for our purposes. And so um, we're just going to walk you through the answer. If the ground is not flat, will the two angles, the two right angles be right? If this ground is bumpy, like it went like this, would you now have a right angle here? No. And so your answer there is no. And if the ground is not flat, will you be able to find congruent angles? Well, no, because you're not going to have similar triangles. And so why is it important for the ground to be flat? Just what they said here. For, um, for you to be able to 
to determine similar figures. And that implies that you can find corresponding congruent angles and then proportional sides. So flip to the last page. I'm not going to have you run through everything that they have on here for the lesson check, but let's just talk about the error analysis. Which solution, this solution or this solution, is not correct? And let's talk about why. First thing you want to look at, have they set up their proportion correctly? Are these triangles oriented correctly? No. So if I were you, I would redraw them. So I'm going to redraw this triangle right here. So I'm going to redraw it, but I'm going to just make it smaller, give or take, than the, the other one. And so don't we know that these right here are vertical angles, and so this angle should be this angle right here? It, all it means, though, is I have to decide, is this side 4 or is this side 4? Because one of these is 4 and one of them is 6. So that must mean that this side is what? 8. So I do know that this is 8. And then this angle right here that's been marked, note here that this is the long side on the big triangle and this is the short side. So on this triangle here, shouldn't this be the long side and this be the short side? So the, two lo the longer uh, measurement out of these two is 6. So I'm going to put 6 here, and then the 4 goes here, which implies that my angle, this marked angle here, shouldn't it be right here? And it makes sense because it's between the side that's 6 and 8. And so this is my congruent angle. And so now I'm going to not look at that particular triangle. So now looking at them, have they set this proportion up correctly? If you do 4 is to 8, isn't that on the same triangle? Technically, you could do 4 is to 8 as so long as you did what is to what on the bigger triangle. What corresponds to 4? 6. And what corresponds to 8? X. So you could do 4 is to 8 so long as you did 6 is to X. So don't they have this one wrong here? Shouldn't that one be 6? So you could have had that proportion. It's a weird way to do it. Typically I'll go large figure to small figure or small figure to large. I won't do it on the same figure, but you could. <clears throat> look, at, look at this one. Is this one set up correctly? 8 is to X. 8 um, refers to this triangle, x to this triangle. So they're going smallest to large. So that means that this side must be small to large. So 4 is small. Does it correspond to the 6 on the large? Yes. So that means that this is set up correctly. So this has the wrong um, proportion to begin with. And in addition to that, Look at the cross products on this one. Not only does it have the wrong proportion, but look at the cross products. We've got 4 times x is 4x, but what's 6 times 8? Oh, I'm sorry, 8 times 8. What's 8 times 8? 64. So it's got two errors in here. Not only do they have the proportion set up incorrectly, but their cross products are wrong as well. Are the cross products correct here? x times 4 is 4x. 6 times 8 is 48. So that's correct. And then when you divide by 40, you get 12. So that's correct. I'm going to <coughs> Excuse me. I thought allergies going crazy today. All right. And so then the other thing that you can look at when you're trying to orient things with triangles, if you didn't want to redraw this triangle here to here, you could look and see, all right, so I've got this is my short side, this is my medium side, and this is my long side. The problem is here when I don't know all three of them, is this my long side, or is it my medium side, or my short side? Well, visually, it looks like a pretty long side. And in reality, it turns out that it is the long side. But if we didn't know that, I would take my smaller triangle here and just list out um, from smallest to largest. And I certainly wouldn't want to do, I would want to go smallest to largest. <laughs> so we're going to do smallest, which is 4, then 6, and then 8. 
And then for the big triangle, what's the shortest side on the big triangle? Shortest side on the big triangle. Because, and it's nice this way because I know that this is the smallest side, so it correlates to the six. So I've got six here. And then um, this six here is the medium side. And so that means that nine must be what? The medium side is not the long side on the big triangle. And so the nine goes here, and then the x has to go here. So x refers to our largest side on that largest figure. And I could put those into whatever proportions I wanted to. What do you note about 6 and 4 versus 9 and 6? What does this reduce to? 3 over 2. What does this reduce to? 3 over 2. And so what's the scale factor? 3 over 2. What else could it be? 2 over 3, right? It just depends on whether we're talking small figure to large figure or large figure to small figure. Okay, so that, that's all we're going to do on that one. Then I want you to take your workbook. And so we're going to do some word problems. So where were you all when I asked you to go get your workbook earlier? I was crying. You were crying? Is that what you said? All right, so we're going to look at page 191. And we're going to do question 9. So we're going to draw pictures as we go. So question 9 says, a 1.4 meter tall child. So here's my child. And they are from here to here. They are 1.4 meters tall. Is standing next to a flagpole. So the child has a shadow. And here's the flagpole. I don't know. Do we start with a red stripe? Oh, goody. Good guess. I'm not going to get 13 stripes in here, Pete. All right. Close enough for government work. Well, those were my stars. Boy, you people are picky. There, you want the blue in there? There's your blue. Happy? All right. Now we feel better. So the flagpole also has a shadow, but the, sh the flagpole is going to have a longer shadow than the child. And the purpose of them telling you that the child is standing next to the flagpole is so that you understand that the sun creates a shadow and if two people are standing too far apart, won't the angle that they are with the sun affect their shadow? So that's why they're always, typically they'll say in these problems that they're standing next to such and such. But, so I drew them standing just a little further away. Um, and then the flagpole uh, the shadow of the flagpole is 7.5 meters. How tall is the flagpole? Well, we have a couple assumptions to make here. Assumption one is that this child is perpendicular to the ground. In other words, they're standing straight and tall, and so is the flagpole. Flagpole is perpendicular to the ground. I know that's not always the case. And then on top of that, we're going to make this right triangle from the top of the child's head to the end of the shadow and from the top of the flagpole to the end of the shadow. So we create these two similar figures. <clears throat> Anytime two people are standing or two things are next to each other with the sun, a right triangle is going to occur and you can assume that they are similar figures. And so um, I forgot to put in this child's shadow. So the child's shadow is 1.2 meters. So what proportion can I set up if I want to find the height of that flagpole? So I'm going to let that height be x. What can I set up for my equation to solve? You write down what you think. And we could have four different answers. 
so long as all four of our answers have the same one. For them to be true proportions, what, what has to be equal? How do you solve a proportion? Cross products, right? So, so long as all four different answers have the same cross products. Oh, gosh, I'm going to sneeze again. Let me go grab a tissue. Okay, so I choose to go small to large. So you're going to see me go small to large. And then I choose height 1.4 is to, what's the height on X? Is to the shadow, small is 1.2 and large is the 7.5. I'm not going to use a hypotenuse of that right triangle because I have no information on it. Sometimes you will. And then we can cross multiply and solve. So somebody help me out with 1.4 times 7.5 please. 7 point what? So I have 10.5 and I have... Who did it on the calculator? How? Oh, hang on, I'll whip out my handy dandy calculator. Hey, if you guys are not doing your job, I cannot help it. So we have 1.4 times 7.5. 10.5 is correct. And then what do I do to solve? So divide both sides by 1.2. And so x is equal to 8.75 turtles. Violets, oranges, what? Meters, thank you. So does that answer the question? The question is asking for how tall is the flagpole? Does that answer the question? Shh. Yes, is an X the height of my flagpole? So yes. So, but you still want to write an answer. So therefore, the height of the flagpole is 8.75 meters. You always want to write a sentence answer. If you don't practice in your homework, you're not going to practice it in real life. All right, so then we are going to do a proof. So let's do number... So we're doing number seven. In number seven, you are given several parallel lines. So RM is parallel to SN. Oh, I'm sorry, one parallel line. And then you have RM is perpendicular to MS. And another perpendicular set of lines, SN, is perpendicular to NT. And you are to prove that triangle RSM is similar to triangle STN. And here's your picture. So we have a, a diagonal line this way. <coughs> and then we have a little right triangle here. And another triangle here. So I missed a little bit. You'll have to deal with that. M and then R and then S, N and T. So then we've got our statements. and our reasons. So let's do some pre-proof planning. 
So the fact that they said that these lines are parallel, they, they kindly uh, noted for you the parallel lines in the picture, but if they hadn't, I would immediately put into my picture a parallel marking. So this line is parallel to this line. And then they told us that we had uh, two sets of perpendicular lines, these two and these two. So that creates a right angle here and a right angle here. But we have to actually take this information, these perpendicular lines, and say what? What's the progression for perpendicular lines to congruent angles? What's your progression? You have perpendicular lines, then what happens? Perpendicular lines form what? Right angles. And what do you know about right angles? They're all congruent. They're congruent, right? So it's a three-part progression. You start with a given. You state you have a right angle because perpendicular lines give you right angles. And then you state that those angles are congruent because all right angles are congruent. So that's going to give us an A. So we're going to get an A from these two. Then what can I use the, these parallel lines here for? Why would they tell me that these lines here are parallel? Noting that you have a transversal. So consider that these lines continued this way. And ignore this, ignore this line right here and this line right there. So consider this and this. Well, that is your line. What do you know about this angle here and this angle there? Are they alternate interior? What kind of angles are they? They're corresponding. So I know that this angle here and this angle here are corresponding angles. And what do you know about corresponding angles on parallel lines? They are congruent. So I'm going to get from here that angle, um, I can say angle R. So angle R is going to be congruent to angle S. So doesn't that give me another A? So how am I going to prove the triangle is congruent? By AA, I'm done. So let's go ahead and start with our, and I'm going to uh, pull apart my given. So I'm going to start with line segment RM is parallel to line segment SN. And so my reason for that? Given. And then my statement two, what do I conclude from the parallel lines? What did we conclude? What did we conclude? We did it in our pre-proof planning. You tell me. I wrote it up there. What is it? What do you conclude? Thank you. So we've got angle R is congruent, not just similar, but congruent to angle S. And what would be our reason for that? If parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. And so that gives us our first, I'm going to put it outside here, our first A. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Yep. But these are easy ones, right? They're no different. These are the easy ones that you were able to get before, right? So they're not the hard proofs. And so then step three, uh, go to your next given. So we're going to put the perpendicular lines together. RM is perpendicular to MS. And SN is perpendicular to NT. Why? Why? Given. What do we conclude from perpendicular lines? That we have right angles. So our right angles we have marked in our picture. So angle, actually I want to make that a different color. So angle... R, M, S, and angle S, N, T are right angles. What's our reason for that?
How do we know? How do we go from this to this? Right. If this, then this. So if you have perpendicular lines, then you have right angles. So that's what you're going to say. Perpendicular lines form right angles. Move it up just a bit. And then step five, what do I conclude from the fact that I have right angles? What do you know that you what do you know about right angles? They're congruent. So angle RMS is congruent to angle SNT. Reason? All all what? All right angles are congruent. And that's not a very good angle marker. So doesn't that give me another angle congruency statement? So as soon as I get AA, what can I state? As soon as I get AA, what can I state? Can't I state my proof statement? So we have triangle RSM is not congruent statement, but similarity statement, is similar to triangle STN. And Y, what's my Y? AA, similarity, postulate, whatever. You don't have to put that part. I'm perfectly happy with just AA similarity. Not so bad. So we're using the same proof progression. So you might want to go back and review your flashcards that you were supposed to have made up earlier, right? especially when we had all those proof progressions up there on the board, which are now gone. Okay, and then let's do one more problem. Let's do, um, so turn the page and let's do number 12. So this time we have a stick that is two meters long is placed vertically at point B. The top of the stick is in line with the top of a tree as seen from point A, which is 3 meters from the stick and 30 meters from the tree. How tall is the tree? So they, fortunately, they give you a picture, right? So I'm going to draw the picture. I assume that was a straight line. So here's our tree. I don't have a brown color. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna. They don't have brown. Oh well. So we'll we'll work with that. We'll have an orange trunk. And then here's my stick. Then here's the information they gave you. So we know that. So this is three meters here. It's hard to tell in their picture, but that's where the three meters is. And then the 30 meters goes from here to here. And then the stick is two meters tall. We don't know how tall the tree is, so that'll be X. And then our points, this would be A, this would be B, and that's all we care about. All right, so the question says, how tall is the tree? So don't we have overlapping triangles? Right? So what proportion are we going to set up? Do you want to go small to large or large to small? So let's go small to large. So let's go with um, this one right here. So let's do small to large. So here's my small triangle and here's my large triangle. I only have two things in my small triangle. So I have three meters. So if I put 3 meters here, what corresponds to 3 meters on the big triangle? The 30, right? And so then the only other thing I have on my small triangle is this 2 meters. What corresponds to 2 meters on the big triangle? 
the x. So I have 2 meters is to x. So you solve that. So while you're solving it, I'm going to solve it quietly here. So what'd you get? What do we get? 50 meters, 100 meters, 3 meters. Does 20 meters seem reasonable? Does that answer the question? So you answer the question. Therefore, the tree is 20 meters tall.